so in, in, in this small session, I like to apply now our time discretization schemes for stochastic processes and study a little bit what happens if we, if we implement this. It's a very prominent and important example. So that is here the log normal process. Huh? So actually by log normal process, I just mean that uh, we have a dx is uh, a mu x dt plus um, a sigma um, x dw. So you know that Black Scholes model is an example for this. But actually, if you allow here that the mu does also depend on x, so it's a mu times x, then you see that, for example, also larger classes like the LIBOR market model, so a big term structure model, is also of that form. So the thing that I'm referring to here is that my diffusion is of the form constant times x dw, like the one we had in the motivation for the Milstein scheme. So what we are doing is we are in a section on the time discretization of stochastic processes. And I already stated uh, some time discretization schemes. Yeah? Convergence will come in the next session. So I already stated the Euler scheme, which is just freeze the coefficients at the starting of the time discretization interval and consider them constant, very simple. Then the Milstein scheme, which gives me an improvement in the DW part by adding here this additional correction factor. Yeah? So that factor that attributes here for changes in the DW part when the sigma does depend on the x. Yeah? So the x prime here is the derivative with respect to the x, which is the case for our uh, log normal process that we have a dependency there. And we also looked at the predictor corrector scheme, which does an improvement in the dt part yeah, by doing some trapezoidal rule. So let's look at time discretization schemes for this special case. And there will be, uh, we will look at Euler scheme and Milstein scheme. We will not look at predictor corrector, but there will be a third one. And that's actually coming here from this point. If you consider this log normal process in the form which I just stated, dx is mu of t and x times x dt plus sigma times x dw. So I allow that sigma is um, a deterministic function. So sigma may depend on time, but it should not depend on x. So my only dependency on x is here, this additional factor. Then you can transform uh, to a different state space. So state space is the space where your random variable assigns values to, so the states of the random variables. So you can move to a different state space. So let's move from x to y, and the y is the logarithm of x. Then, of course, you can use Ito's lemma. So Ito's lemma tells you how stochastic processes transform if one stochastic process is a function of another one. So then you can use Ito's lemma to actually write the stochastic process for this new state. So this is my dy, it's the logarithm of x. So you get that d log x is mu minus one half sigma dt plus sigma dw. And you see that while this guy here was a stochastic coefficient, this guy is now a deterministic coefficient. And if sigma would not depend on t, I would have the SDE with a constant coefficient, so I can immediately write down the solution. But um, I already removed the stochasticity by this uh, transformation. Well, maybe not 
uh, from the drift mu, but if the drift mu would also not depend on, on x, you would also have a deterministic coefficient here. And maybe then you can use the trapezoidal rule yeah, to actually also improve uh, these time dependencies here. But yeah, going to this transformed variable, maybe the discretization error on this transformed variable, which is much slow, uh, smaller than the discretization error on the original process. So you immediately see this if your coefficients mu and sigma are constants, because then the Euler scheme will actually be the exact solution for the y. Yeah? So Euler scheme for the x is an approximation, but Euler scheme for the y is the exact solution. So there's no approximation error if the coefficients are constant, yeah? do not depend on time. So this is actually a far more important technique than discussing these improvements, Euler scheme, Milstein scheme, predictor corrector scheme. It's here Ito's lemma, moving to a different state space and performing the discretization there, and then transforming the discretized variable back to the original state space. This, this is really a very powerful um, approach. So I would like to study now um, our discretization scheme here for this special case. And what I will do is I will do Euler scheme for the original process. I will do Milstein scheme for the original process yeah, because that guy here has a dependency. So Milstein should do some, some change. And then I will do Euler scheme for the transformed process, which are sometimes called log process. So discretization via Euler scheme is clear. Yeah? So it's the new value is the previous value plus mu evaluated at the previous value times the previous value delta ti plus sigma times the previous value multiplied with delta w ti. Next step, discretization via Milstein scheme. So the new value, so the value at the next time step is the previous value plus mu times x delta ti, this is the Euler st step. And now comes plus sigma x delta w ti. This is also the Euler step. And then we have two additional terms. We have minus one half sigma squared times x, which is the sigma times sigma prime delta t, and a plus one half sigma squared x delta w squared, yeah? So these two guys here, are the Milstein correction, yeah? So you see this part here is just the Euler step and then we had this uh, correction. So, but now I just resorted it to writing the delta T parts, yeah? And then I have here this additional part with the delta W. So that would be the Milstein scheme for our stochastic process. So my sigma of t and x of t is just the sigma of t. Yeah? So a little bit abuse of notation, the function that only depends on this. Yeah? So I have that the sigma prime is just the sigma of t. Yeah? So I have the sigma of t squared times x yeah, as the sigma times sigma prime. So that's uh, the Milstein scheme for my log normal process. And now the nice trick, let's do an Euler scheme for the logarithm of x. So I, I'm actually discretizing now my process y. 
Yeah? So y at ti plus one is y at ti plus this drift here evaluated at time ti, times delta ti, plus sigma of ti times delta w of ti. Okay, so it is y tilde of ti plus one equals y tilde of ti plus, and now my stochastic process where actually the factor x to x is removed, but I get from Ito's lemma in addition here, the minus one half sigma squared. Okay, and I do not write the y here. Yeah, I immediately write the log, uh, so the log of x of ti and log of x of ti plus one. And I also keep in the coefficient here. Yeah, actually in the coefficient there was x of t, but if you transform to the y, there would be an exponential of y. So actually here there would be an exponential of y tilde of ti. But then if you transform back, that's of course just the x of x tilde of ti. Yeah? So you can you can also express the arguments in terms of y. It's just a coordinate transformation. So now if you then apply, um, this is the time discretization scheme, the Euler scheme applied to the logarithm of x. So your new state variable, and then you transform back. Yeah? So what you apply is you apply the exponential to this and you get this nice little scheme where now the next value x tilde of ti plus one is the previous value x tilde of ti. Huh? So which is exponential of the logarithm of x tilde of ti. But then the plus here becomes a multiplication with the exponential of all the stuff that is here. So we get multiplied with exponential of this increment. And this scheme, yeah, next value is previous value multiplied with exponential of this increment of the log process. This scheme, I sometimes call it the log Euler scheme. So we will also use this discretization scheme. You see that all the three guys are approximations because if the coefficient here depends on time, yeah, I'm still using the coefficient, I'm still making the approximation that the coefficients are approximated by piecewise constant functions. And also here, yeah, this could be an approximation error. But now if you go to the simplified case where for example, mu and sigma do not depend on time, then you know this here explicitly. Yeah, It's just a normal distribution with mean mu minus one half sigma squared times delta t and standard deviation sigma. So in the case of a constant coefficient, you know this thing here explicitly, yeah, you know the distribution explicitly, it's just a normal distribution, it's not a standard normal, yeah, shifted and rescaled. And then you can just say the new value is the previous value times exponential of this uh, random variable. So you know this is the exact solution for this special case. You can do also an exact discretization if you, well, have time dependent parameters. Yeah? Then of course you have here, if you just have time dependent parameters, so you have here a mu of t, yeah, here anyway, a sigma of t, a sigma of t. Now, if you apply the integral from ti to ti plus one, mu of t dt, and you know this integral analytically. And also if you know the integral sigma of t analytically, actually I need to know the, um, integral sigma squared of t, yeah, because that's the E2 isometry, uh, then you can also write down the exact solution. So for 
the special case where you know the where for so for the special case where your coefficients are just deterministic functions, the coefficients of the log normal process are just deterministic functions, you can just define the partial integrals, integral from ti to ti plus one mu d tau. If and if you know these guys, you can just define an average mu. And also I can just define here an average sigma. And then I know the exact solution of this log normal process for the special case that mu does not depend on, on x is integrating this increment of the log yeah, from ti to ti plus one and replacing here the mu with the exact integral. Yeah? So mu i multiplied with delta ti, yeah? so you see as a one divided by delta ti is the exact integral. So mu i is the average drift over the uh, interval from ti to ti plus one and the same for uh, the sigma i, well, not exactly the same, yeah, because of the e2 isometry, yeah, you need to go to the square of the sigma. So you know that um, integrating sigma of t times dw is a normal distributed random variable with mean zero and, well, this standard deviation. So the variance is the variance accumulated over the time from ti to ti plus one. Yeah. So I'm accumulating the variance. Yeah. The sum of normals, the variance of the sum of normals is the sum of the variance. So you just accumulate the variance. So we also have uh, this if the coefficients. Um, are yeah, of a special form that you know the integrals analytically. Now let's try this in a numerical experiment. And I would try, I would like to try Euler scheme for the original process, Milstein scheme for the original process, and log Euler scheme for the transformed process. So log Euler scheme, so Euler scheme for the transformed process. Yeah. So the third one is, Euler scheme for the transformed process, so our log Euler scheme, for the special case where, um, say, mu is zero and um, the sigma is a constant. So actually, that's ex exactly the case I had in the motivation of the Milstein scheme. That was here, yeah? So let's do now the experiment mu is zero no? and sigma is just a sigma star times x, then I can do Euler and Milstein scheme for this stuff, and I can do Euler scheme for this stuff. Okay, you find this here at uh, Monte Carlo scheme test in this uh, repository, you know, the FinMath experiment repository, and I just want to look a little bit at the code and actually at the results. So I define here some interface that specifies a log normal process with constant coefficients. So it's mu x dt plus sigma x dw. This is my um, process. Well, x um, of zero is the initial value x zero. So there was a typo. Uh, and I can ask this process for the value at a certain time index. So there is an associated time discretization and I can get the random variable. So don't bother now about this random variable here. This is also just an interface. Well, it's just a vector, a sample vector when we do a Monte Carlo simulation. I will do a Monte Carlo simulation. So I can ask for the sample vector tilde x of ti at different indices um, i. Yeah? So that's my interface. And I can also ask for the expectation of this guy. 
So this is just here a function implemented in this random variable. I can also ask of the expectation of log x, and I can ask of the variance. And the reason I'm looking at these quantities is because I know the analytic values for these quantities. So why do you know the, why do we know the analytic values of these quantities? Okay, because actually now I'm in the situation where mu and sigma are constant. So I know the exact solution. Yeah? X at a later point in time is X at the initial value multiplied with the exponential of this stuff, yeah? the integral from zero to uh, the time I'm looking at, mu minus one half sigma squared dt, yeah, that's just this constant times the time step plus sigma delta w. Yeah. So now you see, if you take the logarithm, you have that the expectation of the logarithm is the logarithm of the initial value plus the expectation of that and the expectation of the Brownian increment is zero. So it's just the expectation of mu minus one half sigma squared times T. So later, when I now do my experiment, I know the analytic value of the expectation of the logarithm of my random variable. So the analytic one is the logarithm of the initial value plus mu minus one half sigma squared times the time step. So I can now compare the analytic one to the expectation. Okay, right there, there's a type one. There's a typo here in this method name. Yeah, that looks a bit strange. This should read expectation. Off log. Okay. So now it's nicer. So I can now ask all my numerical schemes for the expectation of the logarithm at a certain time index. And I can compare this with the analytic value. And also I can ask for the variance of the logarithm, where the variance of the logarithm take the logarithm of all this stuff here. Yeah. So it's the initial logarithm of the initial value plus the increment. Well, the First stuff is just initial value plus a drift. It's just changing the mean that's not changing the variance. The variance is just the sigma squared times variance of delta uh, W, the time step size. So I can also compare with the sigma squared times the time step size. I can compare the variance of the logarithm of my random variables. So what I will do now, I will use three different numerical schemes, the Euler scheme, the Milstein scheme, and the log Euler scheme, and calculate expectation of log of X of capital T and variance of log of X of capital T. And I will compare it with the analytic solution. So my three schemes, Euler scheme, Milstein scheme, and log Euler scheme are created here. So I have classes that create these three schemes. So let's just look in the implementation of the class. So you see it has a constructor where it gets its parameter, initial value, mu and sigma. Uh, I'm doing a time discretization scheme. So I need number of time steps and the time step size. And I'm actually inside doing a Monte Carlo simulation. So I also know the number of sample paths for the Monte Carlo simulation. So the core is just this method here that 
calculates the stochastic process. So this method goes from, from here to there. Uh, I have a small helper that generates the Brownian motion with the Monte Carlo. So you know Brownian motion is just a family of increments that are normally distributed. We know how to do that. And then comes the numerical scheme. Um, if the time index is one, I just initialize to the initial value. Otherwise, I have my drift. The drift is mu times delta t and my diffusion, which is sigma dw. And this here is the Euler scheme, which is the new value as the previous value plus mu times delta t times x. Yeah? So this is x times mu times delta t um, plus x times sigma delta w. Okay, that's the Euler scheme. And now you find the same for the Milstein scheme. So this is the Milstein scheme. We have here the Euler step, new value is previous value plus previous, previous value times drift. Yeah? So x times mu times delta t plus x times sigma times delta w. Okay. So that's my other scheme. And then I have my Milstein correction step plus one half X times Sigma squared times Delta W squared minus Delta T. And I have my log Euler scheme, which is the one where the new value is the previous value multiplied with the exponential. And then it's just the drift minus one half Sigma squared Delta T plus this diffusion sigma delta w. So you see here compared to the normal Euler scheme, uh, to the untransformed Euler scheme, this multiplication with the previous value is missing. Yeah? The x factor is missing. Okay, so let's uh, run this code, which compares now these uh, numerical scheme. And I would do the comparison for different number of time steps. So I will use one time step and then I will increase the number of time steps. I will use 11 time steps, 21 and so on. So I will use more and more time steps. And this then changes the approximation of the final variable X of capital T. Yeah? So I'm always looking here at the last time index times Delta T. So at the final, the final time. The last time is here always t equals 10. So I'm always looking at the render variable at the same time, but in between I will use more or less uh, time steps. So now the program runs. And what I'm plotting here is, uh, as you read, uh, it's the error on the mean, delta m, and the error on the variance. Well, it is mean and variance of logarithm of s of t. Yeah, yeah I call it s. Yeah, in my script, it was an x, uh, say, like a stock. Yeah. So I'm actually plotting here the error, yeah, expectation logarithm of S of capital T calculated from the Euler, calculated analytically. So I'm plotting here these errors. Okay, and this is what is happening. So strange for the Euler scheme, if you use one time step, I get not a number. I get not even a result. 11, 21 time step, 31 time step. I don't even get a result. For the Mills time scheme, the same happens for one time step. You do not even get a result. For my log Euler scheme, I get results. And you see also here that you know, the approximation hmm, is not improving. Okay, there are errors. Uh, let's look here when we get a result. Okay, we get a result, but we have a large error. Yeah? There's a 6% error, a 5% error, uh, but the error becomes smaller as we 
use more and more time step. So as we use more and more time steps, the approximation becomes better, both in the mean and the variance. So if you look here, I have 100 time steps. The error is 5%. If you go to 200 time steps, the error is 2.2% yeah, or 2.5%. So it looks, if you double the number of time steps, the error on the expectation here yeah, is halved. So it looks as if I have order one convergence yeah, in uh, the, say, time step size. Yeah? So whenever I half the interval, I half the error. So this looks nice. Yeah? So we have some convergence. So for the Milstein scheme, I also have this strange thing that we do not even get a result. And then I also have convergence, but the error is much smaller from the beginning. Yeah, Really much smaller. As you see, this is 5%. This is already factor, almost factor 10 better. So Milstein scheme is really um, an improvement. Uh, yeah, my log Euler scheme is a little bit disappointed because I thought my log Euler scheme would already be the exact solution. So there is no time discretization error in the Euler scheme if the coefficients are constant and I'm discretizing the logarithm which has constant coefficients. So what's going on here? Okay, so the first thing we have to look at is why don't we get here a result for these random variables? And the thing is quite easy. If you look at the Euler scheme, you have x of ti plus one is x of ti plus mu x of ti delta ti plus sigma x of ti delta w of ti. But now look at this for the first time step. Then the x of ti is the x of zero is the deterministic, right? Okay, so you have here just a deterministic number. So you know that x of t1 is normal distributed. Normal distributed with maybe a shifted mean because there is the initial value here. Normal distributed with a shifted mean, but it is normal distributed. So it will look like that. And there is a positive probability that the guy becomes negative. So this is what is happening actually in Euler scheme. So you know the exact solution or the log Euler, this reads the next value is the previous value multiplied with the exponential of a normal distribution. So you know the random variable x cannot become negative if the initial value is not negative in this numerical scheme. Actually, it's the exact solution. So you also know the exact solution is not negative, but the Euler scheme can generate negative values. And since I'm here taking the logarithm, what's going on is we take the log of negative values. And this defect is going away if you make the time step size smaller because then the probability to create negative values becomes smaller. So maybe we are lucky and we do not create the negative values. And then for the next time step, the Euler scheme will use 
a smaller coefficient. So when you come closer to zero, the probability to cross zero is reduced again. Yeah? So this will heal a little bit. So this is why smaller time steps suddenly heal this problem. Interesting, the Milstein scheme also has this defect for the first time step, but it is much faster healed. And the reason is that the Milstein scheme is just the Euler step. So it also has the deficiency that it could create a negative value in this step. But then there is the Milstein correction factor and the Milstein's correction factor here would be one half sigma squared times X of Ti multiplied with delta W squared minus delta T. And now you see what's this guy, what this guy is doing. If you generate a large negative random number that would pull in the Euler scheme, you down to negative values. But then if this number is very large, the Milstein correction factor will pull it back again. Yeah. So this guy here, if delta W becomes larger than the delta T, then this guy here, well, when delta W becomes larger than the square root of the delta T, then this guy here is larger than that. And we will add again something. Yeah? So we could dip down a little bit, but for very large values, we go back again. Yeah? So only a few values could cross this line. So that's the reason why it may happen for the Milstein scheme too, but it happens more rarely, yeah, because these guys that are very low are actually pulled back. So you see that the Milstein scheme is doing well, quite a useful correction. And also you see that the error is much smaller. So maybe I have to explain why you see still an error in the log Euler scheme because my claim was that the log Euler scheme does not have a time discretization error. And do you know what it is? Well, if you take a look, you see that I have a small error for say a very few time, time discretization points. I have a larger error for many time discretization points. You see actually that the error here doesn't even depend on the time discretization so it is not the time discretization error. So this is just the error because I'm doing a Monte Carlo simulation. This is the Monte Carlo error. So it has nothing to do with this time discretization experiment here. And you also see that this here is maybe the best you can expect. And that's also the reason why the Milstein scheme suddenly stops to improve yeah, because we already reached the best we can reach. Yeah? Actually, it happens quite early that we that we reach very good values. Yeah, okay, that was it for this little excursion to how we discretize the log normal process. Next session, conversions rate.